Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. It is the Lord's Day, at least here it is. I think it's probably already Monday uh, on the other side of the world. But anyway, the title of the lesson is Looking for a Better Place. And of course we always want something better. Yeah, we, we, we spend most of our life on a journey and along the way we, we try and find places that are better. We might look for a better job, we might look for a better house, we might look for uh, something else, uh, something different than what we're used to. And so we look around and so we, we convince ourselves that it was for the better. And sometimes that's the case, sometimes we regret the decisions we make. And so when we're going to another place, we, we want to make sure everything's convenient for us. We want to have access to schools and uh, uh, stores, uh, maybe events of some sort. And of course, uh, uh, having a close congregation that we can be part of. Some people just decide, well, I'm going to go move such, such and such. And there may not be a congregation around for 40 or 50 miles. And that's not very good. That's not very smart either. And so um, a lot of people looking for a better place, and we, there, there's so many factors to consider in this. But we are going to talk about a better place today, and that place is heaven. And heaven is where I want to go, and I'm sure that most of you want to go there also. And although it has been promised to you and me, we also understand there are rules and regulations and requirements for us to enter that better place. Yeah, God made it available to us. He said it's the free gift of His grace. But His grace also teaches us that we're supposed to behave a certain way. And so uh, we, we see that um, many people are per perplexed by this aspect of free. I mean, we're going to talk about free for a little bit. Uh, if something is free, why do you need to pay for it? That's what people question. Well, if it's free, why do you have to do anything to get it? Well, yeah, you know, publish, Publishers Clearinghouse is supposed to be free, but you know what? You got to look at their ads, you got to maybe buy their magazines, you got to do something like that. Uh, you have to mail in the, um, the entry form and all that sort of stuff. And so, um, is it really free? <laughs> okay, well, uh, why do you have to do anything to get it? Well, let's get this straightened out for now. See, salvation is a result of the free gift of God. And God wants everyone to be saved. God wants everyone to go to heaven. And so we realize that we as mankind, we cannot buy it or purchase it. It cannot be purchased. It cannot be bought. Uh... And really, there's nothing we can do of ourselves to acquire this salvation. But God has given us a set of instructions that he would give this grace freely. And of course, uh, there's a little, there's a great big word that we have to consider right now, if. Probably the biggest, most important word in the English language. I mean, in our language, if we complied with the instructions of God. And so we realize nothing is truly free. So you try going in a store and picking up one item that's uh, buy one, get one free, and try and walk out with it and say, well, well I just picked up the free one. Well, <laughs> that's what your reasoning is. Well, I just picked up the free one. I didn't buy the, uh, the first one. So, yeah, what are they going to think about that? They call that shoplifting. See, you must buy one in order to get one free. <clears throat> then you think to yourself, that's really not free. And so perhaps you are not paying full price, but if the item costs more than zero pennies, it is not free. And uh, there's a price for freedom. We know that in our country. We uh, kind of uh, appreciate those who have paid the ultimate price to provide for our freedom. Because otherwise we'd be speaking Japanese right now or we'd be uh, speaking German or some other language from many years ago. So uh, let's get back to our um, spiritual application of the better place. 
And we have in this world, all we have is sorrow, pain, heartache, misery, tears, all these things. And occasionally, and depending on your outlook in life, we do have some brief moments of happiness. And some who have really learned to be content with what they have, they have more happiness than others. And so uh, they, they have a lot of moments of happiness. But no matter what blessings you may think you have here, there is a better place. And that's what we need to be considering. Because Paul tells us that our citizenship is in heaven. And so uh, we read about it. Yeah, Revelation 21 gives us a picture. I mean, a, a magnificent place full of opulence and, and beauty. And what, what the writer was doing was using things that we can relate to and as a comparison. But really nothing compares. Because, uh, you know, uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, around verse 28, he says... Uh, Whatever we think or imagine about heaven, it's going to be far better than that, far superior to whatever we can think or even ask. And so, yes, and it's a place whose builder is God. And, of course, we can join Abraham that we read about there in Hebrews 11, verse 10, who was looking for a city that was made by God. And so this place is prepared for the saints of God. Jesus said in uh, John 15, he would go and prepare a place for us. And so, yeah, that, that's what, or was that John 14? John 14. He would go pre prepare a place for us. And then, of course, the disciples asked, well, how do we get there? And Jesus said, I am the way. All right. You know, a lot of people in this world talk about the dead as being in a better place. And we've heard this, and really, yeah, if that's what makes people feel better, I mean, go for it. Let them go ahead and say it. But the truth of the matter is, is that if, they, if the people who died never paid God any attention, always rejected God, and always cursed those who would serve God, and never obeyed God, what makes you think they're going to be in a better place? I mean, I, I've heard this so many times. And then then you, you hear about some famous individual, I mean, who, who lived a wanton life of total worldliness. I mean, he was just, you might even say even evil. But then when they die, they put R.I.P. on the grave. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. And they say, well, he's in a better place or she's in a better place. I mean, people who have rejected God are not going to be in a better place. And that's the truth of the matter. And everybody needs to hear that. Because um, hell can never be described as better than anywhere else. Never. I mean, it is a place of horror. It is a place of darkness. It is a place without hope. It is a place without God. And so, if we don't want to go there, we need to focus our efforts to go to a better place. And, of course, the Bible tells us how to get to that better place. And the only way to go there is to seek God with our whole heart. In other words, we've got to make that our priority in life. You know, uh, Colossians 3 and verse 1 and 2. Seek the things above and uh, where God is, and not the things of this earth below. So we can have freedom, but we must be cautious to not abuse our freedom by doing things we're not supposed to do. See, some people think, well, freedom gives me the right to do whatever I want to do. Well, that may work in some places, but when it comes to God, it does not work. The only way we can have freedom from our sins is by obedience to his gospel message and by living in such a way that brings honor and glory to God. So we have to be cautious not to abuse any freedoms we might perceive we have. See, freedom isn't just the, the right to do whatever you want to do. It also carries the responsibility to do what you ought to do. And so that's what we need to do. So we need to serve the Lord in all that we do. And when we're done doing that, 
then God is going to invite us into the better place on Judgment Day. So that, that's just a very simple message, but it, it's one that needs to be said and needs to be considered because, let's face it, everybody's going to die. Some are going to go to a better place. That's true because they have been righteous. They have been faithful to God. They have been obedient to God. But many, many, many will not go to that better place because they have rejected God, they have turned their back on God, they have cursed God, and they have hated God, and I mean, you name it, that's what they're doing. So, consider these thoughts, and uh, we're going to um, end the lesson for now, but uh, you have a nice day, and Lord willing, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.